this uh, bracket clock here is a fine example of what was made in London at the end of the 17th century. And it's just perfection of clock making. The case, the movement, the quarter repeat, lovely plain handle, but it looks magnificent. It isn't ornamented as he's a Quaker, but it's functional and looks the part. And then these lovely flowers in the mounts, uh, complicated, uh, again, leaves all interlocking, beautiful casting, very, very thin and wasting no materials. The fret on the styles of the door, here it is uh, on the three side of the door, and it's all ready with the polished area for the uh, keyhole to be cut through. And that has been done, obviously, on the other side. And the keyhole fret itself, all ready to guard the edge of the style of the door from clumsy people scratching the door with the key. And look how the swirls of the engraving meet and join and make a, a, almost a frame for the signature, Dan Quare, London. And look at the lovely hour hand, the three-dimensional scalloping, the shaping. It's a beautiful hand. Uh, it's three-dimensional in these areas. And it's been made out of steel and then hardened and tempered and blued. And this is over 350 years old. The spandrels are good quality spandrels, but at the end of the 17th century, competition was making price an important issue. And it hasn't quite had the care and attention to the detail that a nib spandrel would have had um, 10 or 15 years previously, where each little mark um, was chased out to give a crisp, sharp, reflective finish. The false pendulum and the wonderful chamfering around the aperture here. It's not just a simple chamfer, it's got the, the stop and it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Imagine trying to make that, even today. It all blends into a beautiful, complete design. So look at the wonderful engraving on this back plate. And because it's a repeating clock, a quarter repeat, it's got rack striking. And so it hasn't got a count wheel on the back here. But you can see the repeating arm. And if I just lean over and pull the repeat cord, you'll see it cock. So bong for one o'clock, and then the, the chimes three times, three quarters past one in the morning. And isn't it a beautiful engraving? Even the little apron to cover the back cock uh, all fits in these wonderful swirls. Highest quality engraving, typical of London of the period. Fine, proud signature, Daniel Quare, London, on the Lambrequin, surrounded by the uh, called Wheat Ear engraving, a lovely pattern, and then outside this floral design. And at the top, onto the back cock, the pierced and engraved apron, just to beautify the back cock, the suspension for the uh, pendulum arbor. Left hand corner on the three side of the clock, uh, you can see the cocking of the repeat lever when I pull the string, let go. One also, it's obviously meant as a traveling clock because it's got these lovely strong brackets holding the movement in. 
and there are four of these holding the back plate um, so that it would travel well even if it was uh, not upright all the time. And so when do you want it to stop it for travelling, you've got the lock for the pendulum just clicks in there and then it's held spring up against the, the back plate and won't move in transport. Lovely travelling clock. The back plate has the highest standard of engraving imaginable. It's absolutely beautiful with the floral design the sweeping swirls uh, so wonderfully interlocked uh, to make a complete pattern. And the four mounting brackets for the, the four corners of the back plate. And then the quarter repeat lever. It's not a quarter striking, it only operates the repeat for quarters. So set. Three o'clock. It's half past three in the morning. And Quare is another of these clock makers nobody knows anything about where he came from or how, how he learnt his trade. And he appears to have come from Somerset and that his parentage was uh, Quaker. And he, he came into the clockmaker's company the same year as Tompion, that was uh, 1671, but he wouldn't swear an oath to them um, because he was a Quaker. And this was a problem later in life as well when he wanted to take apprenticeships. Um, so his apprentice, when they uh, eventually started taking them, uh, they were called covenanted servants, not apprentices made all the difference. Ware was an entrepreneur as well as just being a clockmaker. He had uh, many other uh, interests and trades. Uh, he was a watchmaker and he had a battle with the Reverend Barlow as to who had invented the first uh, repeating pocket watch. And it the, the Reverend Barlow has applied for a patent and of course being a Quaker um, he was not very keen on patents and it was put to the test by the king himself, James II and he tried the Barlow watch and the um, Quare watch and he preferred the Quare watch because when you pressed it uh, you only had to press and it gave you the quarters and the hours, where on the Barlow you had to press for the quarters and the hours, so that he judged, the king judged, that the Quare watch was superior and he was granted a patent.